to Hells of First Baptist Church. And for all of you who are here or uh, meeting with us online, we thank you very much. And um, we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Uh, before we get started today, I would like to remind everyone that in the Lord we are overcomers. And we don't have to fear anything like the coronavirus. And 2 Timothy 1.7 reminds us that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so I encourage you to reflect on those thoughts with me today and um, in Christ. Um, like it says in Matthew 24, in the end days there will be pestilences and famines and earthquakes and these things. Um, that show that we are in the end times. But um, with Christ, um, we can do all things. Um, today we're going to continue our study on um, overcoming certain things like bad attitudes. And we are going to continue our study in our book, Growing Up Kids God's Way. And um, God's Holy Word, the Bible, has all the answers that we need for all the questions that we have concerning raising our children for um, Jesus' sake and teaching them how to be saved. Uh, one more thing I'd like to add in the introduction is that our greatest concern right now should not be uh, the coronavirus, but it should be, um, am I ready to meet Jesus? Am I saved? Has my soul been rescued from hell and are my sins forgiven? Thank you for joining us and with our teacher, Todd Frederick. Hey, thanks for coming by and, uh, and tuning in. And, uh, one of the biggest things I was going to add to that is uh, the biggest virus of mankind is sin. And that's what we're going to talk about today, one of the issues of that. And uh, what we're doing with this study is showing how that we can um, have the, uh, the equipment within us through right teaching and the Word of God to raise our children. Uh, for the Lord, and uh, if we have um, these principles lived out in us, then of course uh, we can more easily convince them how to live. Uh, today's topic is about uh, ways to avoid robbers, uh, how to do life God's way. Uh, so our current study, um, we're basically learning, learning how that we're to, like I said, uh, serve the Lord, teach our children, uh, how to live for God, and, and then basically what our children are going to do is be like little mirrors of us. They're going to be uh, emulating us, as it says in Proverbs 22, 6, uh, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Uh, so if we train them up to be rebels and uh, godless and all like that, and probably they'll grow up like that, according to what the Scripture says. Now, there's some exceptions like... Um, Madeline Murray O'Hare, ironically, she was a devout atheist, but then her son grew up to be a pastor. Uh, so God can break molds, but it's, uh, it's better to shape them and train them. That way there's no breaking. Uh, they're just going with the flow of God's word and his power. Uh, but uh, there are three robberies we want to avoid. And these three robbers are wrong attitudes, wrong actions, and wrong fears. Uh, Proverbs 14 and 11, uh, we read, There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 14 12. So, in our, in our uh, secular mind, in our mind of reasoning, outside of God influencing us in His wisdom, there's a way that seems right, um, but those ways will end in death. So, we don't want to go that way. <clears throat> uh, so the Bible is full of examples of people who uh, have right attitudes, actions, and fears. Right ways. There's right ways, and then there's wrong ways. But for example, we can look at David, who was um, having right attitudes, actions, and fears, such as like when he uh, saw Goliath. What did he do? He he had an attitude against Goliath. That was a good attitude because uh, he with his tool he took action, and he with his sling and stone he took out Goliath. And kill him. Uh, but he also exercised right fear because he could have taken out Saul, King Saul, who was trying to kill him. But Saul, when he was lying down in the cave sleeping, 
um, after trying to hunt down David and find him and kill him, uh, I saw while he was resting, David was in the cave further inside the cave and came out and saw King Saul and he could have taken and just uh, killed him. Uh, but he just cut off a piece of his uh, robe and then um, then he left the cave and yelled, you know, King Saul, I have this, you know, and uh, long live the king. So he feared the king because he was the, assigned to be the king at that time. Uh, so you can take action prematurely and not have the right fear um, <clears throat> and then be doing God a disservice and disobeying him. So he exercised boldness uh, in his action against Goliath, but he, he used proper fear for the king. Um, but all that's found there in uh, 1 King. Uh, but when we get started uh, in the direction of going rogue on God, basically doing what we want to do, then uh, we're inviting these robbers to come in and be robbing us of our happiness. Uh, we fail to trust God for this type of thing, the uh, happiness that comes through living for Christ, serving Him, um, then this decision that we make under this or that circumstance uh, will then cause our lives to be inviting in these robbers, the robbers of wrong attitudes, actions, and fears. So when we get our happiness robbed from us, we often um, don't really see it coming, but we see oftentimes the faults in other people. And it's easy to do that because our own our pride gets basically in the way of us seeing clearly enough to where we can uh, take action on ourselves before these uh, bad things happen. Uh, so we need to pray that God will help us to recognize our faults and see what's wrong in our lives uh, to avoid these robbers. We need to trust God in that. Uh, another type of wrong attitude is uh, having guilty feelings. You know, sometimes you know, we... Uh, prevent ourselves from being freed from past sins. Now, this thing that we've done and confess to God and maybe our uh, family or whatnot, and then, you know, they've forgiven us, but we still allow Satan to egg us on and say, you know, you did this in the past. You know, and, and it's almost like handicaps. So we need to not let our past sins that we've been forgiven of uh, continue to trip us up and rob us of our happiness. So um, these past sins, once they're forgiven, uh, they shouldn't hold any more guilty feelings against us because this will rob us of our happiness and, and the right relationships that we could be having with God and others. You know, uh, I'm sure many of us have found ourselves in a situation like that where we have a bad uh, situation that we we are living in ourselves, but we're the only ones kind of knows about it. You know, our minds need to be set free. God's forgiveness. <clears throat> um, and in the process, we'll gain that happiness and we could be then serving God and helping others in this freedom. Uh, so hold on to guilt is basically a byproduct of not trusting God at His Word. So if we commit a sin, and, we, and the Bible tells us to uh, confess our sins to God and He'll forgive us, uh, if we still hold on to that past sin that we've been forgiven of by God and then uh, we're not basically trusting in God that he's forgiven us. Uh, so we're not taking him at his word and we're not taking him that his promise is genuine. Uh, so we can think of a trust kind of like this like uh, you know, his father would tell his, uh, his child, you know, here, jump into my arms and the child will do it. You know, because he is trusting his dad. And so that's kind of like what we need to be Jesus said we need to come to God like a little child. Trusting. It's natural for a child to trust a father. Now, I guess if the father were a mean dad, you know, he'd say, jump into my arms, and the child jumps, and he steps out of the way, and the kid crashes down the pavement, you know. Uh, the kid would, after a while, learn not to trust his father, but God is not that type of father. We need to trust him that he will catch us when, we, uh, when he tells us to jump. The uh, next robber that comes uh, our way is uh, in the way of wrong actions. Uh, wrong actions occur when we uh, conduct ourselves against God's laws. Uh, God's laws are set up as barriers, roadblocks, uh, guardrails. 
those type of things for our for our good. People think, well, God, the laws are mean and all like that, but they're set in place as a means of protecting us. So when we cross over those barriers, then that's transgressing, and then we commit wrong actions, which invites in uh, the robbers of our happiness. Uh, so when we sin, uh, that's what that's called, uh, breaking God's law, crossing over these barriers, then uh, when we sin, that uh, uh, takes away our joy and happiness. Uh, most civil laws are based on God's law in some sense. You know, like you can't go and rob somebody. Uh, you know, that's something that's based on God's Ten Commandments, for example. Uh, so if we uh, lie, cheat, steal, uh, commit immorality, and those type things against, you know, a fellow human, um, uh, when this happens, then sin occurs, and then um, our happiness is dropped from us. You know, we can commit immorality, for example, against someone uh, who consents or not consents. Either way, in God's mind, and the uh, economy of the law, that's still sin. Uh, they have a big thing now that is, you know, it's, it's just consenting between two adults. Well, if the two adults are married, then that's you know, breaking God's law. So um, <clears throat> that's where man's law oftentimes falls short against God's laws. <clears throat> um, but um, when we do these sinful actions against someone, then trust is broken. Uh, think about that with uh, maybe somebody who has a daycare, if they uh, mistreat the children, then obviously the parents are like, hey, you know, and then the trust is broken, and things like that. Uh, so when trust is broken, then that will rob us of happiness. So we got to keep ourselves in line with God's word and not be robbed of happiness. Uh, our actions will dictate that. The happiness, to clarify it, the happiness is actually based on what's happening. You know, uh, but joy is actually uh, different. Joy is actually a, a fruit of the Spirit, fruit of the Holy Spirit. For example, you can be jailed for preaching the gospel, and then you'll lose your happiness. But while you're in jail, you can be full of joy. You, know, you can just ask uh, Paul and Silas about that. They were joyful and jail and singing and all of that. Um, so the third type of robber uh, is that which is fear. Um, now this kind of fear um, robs us of that which stems from lacking in the belief of God and or, or others. You know, you can, uh, the fear is a good thing, and, and when it's done in the right context. Uh, on the one hand, fear found in uh, Proverbs 1.7 Proverbs 1 7, we're told that uh, fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So if we have fear, a right type of fear, then um, that's good because that's the beginning of knowledge. But if we don't fear God, then we're not going to have the beginning of knowledge. We're living in foolishness. Um, so this is a healthy type of fear. Uh, but in Revelation 21 8, we read, uh, But the fearful, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So this type of fear, that the fearful shall have their part in the lake of fire, which is other things after that. Do you want me to read it? Um, yeah, you can. It says, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable, that means things God hates, and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, that's people that worship false gods, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> all that stuff stems from breaking God's law, committing wrong actions, not fearing the right type of fear, fearing God, and uh, which is honor and, and reverence and all that. Um, so this type of sin, this type of fear is sin and robs us and every one of us, you know, uh, of happiness. And when left unconfessed, a person who isn't saved dies in that state. They're uh, left to be standing before God guilty, you know, and then uh, 
side of the hill to leave the fire. Um, so the thing that like this is a fear is a good thing if you come up to a vicious dog who's barking at you, you know, you're thinking, I'm going to drive this way, you know, that's a good type of fear. Uh, so, but we don't need to, you know, fear, um, like walking down an aisle at the church, you know, we hear the preaching, we get convicted of our sin, and think, wow, I don't want to go to hell, you know, like that, but what my family think, you know, uh, they're of a different persuasion, they're atheists, or they're Muslim, or whatever, and uh, if I get, if I walk down this aisle and get saved, and I go home, what will happen to me? And so you start fearing man instead of fearing God, and then what happens is uh, you leave from that environment where the Spirit of God is working, and then you kind of start getting cold to hearing God's uh, voice about the same topic you need to be saved. And so that's a very slippery slope and dangerous place to be at. Uh, so that type of fear is, is uh, what's going to eventually lead somebody into um, being cast in a the fire when they die someday. We don't need to fear man, to fear God, and, and the right way. And um, so, depending on how we act or, or react to fear, uh, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Then that type of fear will help us to have uh, joy uh, by the Holy Ghost. Of course, when a person is not saved, they can't have joy. You know, they can have only happiness. And joy. Uh, that comes from the Holy Spirit. So if a person's not saved, they can never have joy. When they get saved, then they can have joy. Of course, there is hindrances to joy because when we're not living with the Spirit of God dwelling in us in, in a welcome state, you know, it's almost like God, like I mentioned here recently, is that God, is He on your throne or are you on the throne and God's off the throne? I was going to say, I've always heard that um, that happiness is based on happenings, which is circumstantial. Um, but if we're living in the will of God, then we will always have that, you know, joy deep down within our soul like a bubbling brook, no matter what the circumstances are. Um, and happiness is a byproduct of being in God's will. It's not the goal, it's the byproduct. Yeah, by uh, the way uh, Pastor Vaughn had said it from a uh, previous church we've had is that happiness is based on what's happening. So that's kind of an easy way to remember it. So what's happening? If you got a promotion, you're happy. You get fired, you're not happy. But are you, did you lose your salvation when you, you know, lost your job? No, <laughs> but you still have joy because the Spirit of God is, is the source of our strength and joy. And uh, also with the filling of the Spirit of God, being born again, receiving Him in our lives, um, the fruit of the Spirit is also, along with joy, is uh, love, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control, uh, temperance. So um, when a person is not saved, they don't have all those things. But when we are saved, we have the ability to have self-control, restraint, that type of thing. So that will keep us from being robbed. You know, if we don't have self-control, then we'll make wrong actions and that kind of thing. So uh, this is what our lesson's about. As we live out these principles in our own lives, then our children will see those things, and we won't be like, do what I say, not as I do, you know, like, uh, type thing. And we want to live our life in such a way that if our kids were exactly like us, would we be happy, <laughs> you know, or would we be thinking, uh, don't do that, you know. Uh, so it's a, it's a sobering thought to check up for us to make sure that we're not inviting these robbers in our lives. Not only our lives, but the lives of others, our co-workers, our family, extended family, well, our children. So each of us is subject to being robbed of our happiness uh, and uh, our joy, if we're saved, because of our sin nature. Uh, we've broken one or more of God's laws at some point in our lives, and uh, it's just that that's the case because we have a sin nature. We will uh, more easily make decisions on our within our sin nature because that's the way that seems right. You know, make a decision. Let's see. Well, we got the terrible 
uh, flu in the, in the community, so um, I think we ought to stay home from church today. We don't want to get anything, don't want to spread anything. Well, uh, will not God protect us as he did the children of Israel? You know? uh, he put upon all the Egyptians, you know, the plagues and uh, that type of thing, but the children of Israel, he would help them. In fact, now when it came to the death angel to come, the death angel passed over the children of Israel. So we need not live in fear. Fear, like I said, will rob you. Um, and that type of thing. So, um, but if we um, if we think about it, if we do fail and we will and sin and that type of thing, uh, we need to remember that we're not doomed. Uh, I slipped up, I sinned. What can I do? I just have to live in it all my life. Uh, First John. 1 9 says, uh, and this is for the Christian. 1 John 1 9, John tells us if we confess our sins, Jesus is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when we confess our sins to God, not just simply like um, they do with Marty Brown, for example, or some um, event where a person deliberately goes out and sins and then comes back without. Repentance. You know, they sit their mouth words all the time. If you don't really mean it, then uh, yeah, that's not really going to be mean anything. Jesus said, except you repent. Confess. Repent. You shall all likewise perish. So when we, with the right heart, come to God, He you know, will forgive us because that's why He came to the cross. He paid the sin debt for us. That way we can have forgiveness and restoration. Um, yet to the unbeliever, uh, you need to call out for for Jesus to, to save you, to cleanse you, to forgive you of your sins. And then when that takes place, then all things become new. Old things are passed away, as the Bible says, all things become new. <clears throat> so this prayer, uh, you can pray uh, however you want it, in, some, in a sincere prayer to God, uh, because it's not so much the prayer that saves you, it's, it's the Savior that saves you. You just line up your will with His will, and He calls Here's your call to him, and he'll uh, give you the uh, gift of salvation. But in Luke 18, 13, this simple prayer is what Jesus said. The one man prayed, and he was justified. And he prayed, meaning that he had his sins forgiven. And, and that simply is this. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And so that should be the prayer for us today. If we're not saved, if you're out there... Watching this video and um, just stumbling the process and uh, let's just let's see what this guy has to say. Um, that's what God's prayer is for us uh, for you today, is that God be merciful to me a sinner. And then you can have the, the Spirit of God Himself come in and dwell in you. And then the joy that passes all understanding uh, will come in. And then comes the challenge because, you know, when we read the Word of God, then we can have God's knowledge guide and direct us, Spirit of God instruct us on how to live and that type of thing and we can look out for these robbers and know what decisions to make and that type of thing uh, so if there's nothing else to add okay. I was going to add one thing, getting back to the point of um, misplaced fears um, somehow we can um, go to Walmart and get whatever we think we need there but we're not afraid to do that but People are afraid to go to church or go to school or whatever their other responsibilities are. And so um, I think we need to be careful to um, be consistent, too. Yeah, I've got some people say, well, I don't like going to church because um, I don't like crowds, but they go to Walmart and it's pretty crowded there. <laughs> or uh, the church is too cold. They'll go to you know a football game and sit in the snow. You see sometimes these uh, games play with them. New York, someplace like that, you know, they've got snow coming down, everybody's sitting there like, hey, you know, cheering for their, you know, it's like 10 degrees outside, it's like, okay, well, uh, God doesn't want to hear excuses, he just wants to hear confession, and uh, he'll, he'll make all things new, um, so with that, I guess we'll wrap it up, and, and uh, thanks for coming, and, and uh, hit that little button there on the left, says, uh, subscribe, and then,